gorgeous Leo. How you doing? This month is interesting. On a positive note, at the beginning of the month, you can really get ahead when it comes to your career or what you're passionate about in life. You're really focused on it and you're tweaking things and talking about things and changing details that could get you massive rewards. Now get that done before the 13th when Mercury goes retrograde. Mercury enters Capricorn on the 1st and that gives you this amazing eye for detail. However, make sure that you're not critical of yourself or other people, particularly when it comes to work. Otherwise, you could find yourself in a bit of a backwards and forwards annoyance with somebody that you're connected with. If you're not working, it's whatever you're passionate about, wherever you're putting your focus for this phase in your life. You're ready to commit. You're ready to really get stuck in. And there's lots of talk about something that you're going to do long term. And you may be kind of really sensibly looking at all the details about what that involves. What does it mean? Check the small print, make sure that whatever you're signing up for is what you want, but it could lead you to become in, in a much more powerful position. You're working towards being in your power and being powerful in some way. And there may be a discussion with somebody that's already that you consider more powerful than you, whatever that means to you. Now, Venus, the planet of love and abundance, is entering Scorpio. And for you, it's all about your home and family. That's what's going to nourish you this month. That's what's going to give you pleasure. That's what's going to recharge you. Anything to do with your home and family. You should be having a good time, get togethers, going into people's spaces that you feel comfortable with, etc., etc. Now, um, Neptune is going direct and it allows you again you're dreaming about being powerful you're dreaming about resolving any issues with anyone where there's been a lack of boundaries when it comes to who has the power who has the control and you're not standing for it actually you're using your intuition to go forward and get into your power and stand stand up and say right this is who i am and this is what i want with mercury trying jupiter on the 8th there's a very important conversation connected to all of those issues and you have an opportunity to grow expand and move forward um maybe that there's some discussions you have to have with family or those people close to you about the changes you have to make or the changes you've decided to make do it with a little dose of sweetness and you should be fine now, the new moon in Sagittarius is a great one for you. It's bringing about the next phase of joy, creativity, love, lust, passion into your life. What is holding you back from ex really expressing your creativity? What's holding you back from really feeling the pleasures of life? This new moon in Sagittarius allows you to just transition into the next phase where you are free again to start again in some way when it comes to love and creativity. Uh, be careful if there's someone that you're pining for, fantasizing, fantasizing over, but it's more like an affair or something where you're not getting 50-50 connection, be cautious on the 17th of December because it, it, it brings it up to you. On the one hand, you know, you're, you may be lusting, longing, daydreaming, obsessing about someone and you may be getting breadcrumbs but if it's not, fight for, not right for you, you need to clear the illusion because it's just draining your energy. And, you know, it is no good for your darling. You've got to, you deserve to have 50-50 uh, relationships. Now, Pluto is going into a very crucial degree on the 20th of December. And it's a time where you are finally making changes, uh, maybe to your work, your ha habits and your patterns to free yourself. This whole month is about freeing yourself, really, in many ways, finding your security and stepping into your power and you're ready for it. You are really working hard and putting the effort in. Now, retrograde Mercury re-enters Sagittarius. There may be an ex-lover popping up or even a creative project that could come back to life. That's the positive um, with the ex-lover. Well, <laughs> it's up to you to be clear in your own mind about what you want. You're very different now and you've got to make sure that it's not are just the same old, same old repeat patterns of promises that didn't happen. If it's a creative project or perhaps even somebody that you really love from the past that pops back in and you go and hang out together, that is great. The full moon in Cancer. 
is making you very dreamy, very psychic. You are full of intuition and it's a peak experience. So really pay attention to what your gut feeling is saying to you. Any dreams or coincidences really, really make the difference then and are important to you. Venus shift signs on the 29th and yeah, baby, it's going into a fabulous place for you which is all about love, fun, laughter, creativity, joy, affairs, romance, and it's going to draw to you lots of pleasurable experiences. So that is a great way to step into the new year. Take care, gorgeous, and I'll speak to you soon. So here is the deck. I love the box. Got some of the tarot heroes on the front that are in my deck, which I'll tell you about later. It is flip top. How fabulous is that? I love that. And then you have the little booklet here. Little nuggets of information about each card. Here they are. Notice the gold. The Fool. The Magician. The High Priestess, which is so important because it is Pamela Coleman Smith. She was the illustrator of the original right away and i have three lovers cards the chariot strength the hermit various heroes here this is anime wong so i've got this leaflet that comes with a pack it gives you one line of straight to the point wisdom about it but this is the book and i'm so pleased with it because what i aim to do with this deck is to inspire your own psychic ability but also to empower you and uplift you every day with the message of the card let's take a look inside in it, we've got the meanings and readings. All my knowledge is in this book, all my love and all my heart. I talk to you about my journey and I talk to you, most importantly, about how to dive in and learn the tarot really quickly, because that's the way I roll. Very easy guide. I talk to you about reversals and how to empower yourself and feel the love of the tarot. And then there's a little space where you can do your readings. And at the back, really importantly, I talked to you about all the card characters, the amazing things they did in the world to inspire us. Just to give you a taster, let's pull a card to see what we've got. Oh, that is a great card. The Nine of Cups, the Wish card. The most basic interpretation of the Nine of Cups is that you're being given a massive cosmic yes. This book is my life's work. I've been doing tarot basically from when I was born. It's been a lifelong passion and you could, you're always learning when it comes to tarot and I've tried to put everything I know and and all the magic and how you can learn quickly. You can get them from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and potentially order them from your local bookshop and support your local bookshop. These carry my heart and my soul, and I thank you for being on this journey. You inspired me to do it, because I wanted to have a inclusive deck. So I thank you for being my inspiration.